Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good. Today, we will discuss about the anatomy of ulna. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Talking about the paths of ulna, it has got three paths. The proximal end, the shaft, and the distal end. So this is the proximal end, this is the shaft, and this is the distal end. Let's discuss what all anatomical structures are present in these parts. Taking the proximal end first, the first part is the olecranon or the olecranon process. The olecranon process projects upwards from the shaft. The next structure is the coronoid process. The coronoid process projects forwards from the shaft and just below the olecranon process. Let's have a look at them. This upward projecting process is the olecranon. This forward projecting process is the coronoid process. Continuing the structures of the proximal end, the next structure is the radial notch. The upper part of the lateral surface of the coronoid process has the radial notch that articulates with the head of the radius to form the superior radio ulna joint. There is a tuberosity present called as the tuberosity of ulna or ulna tuberosity. The lower corner of the anterior surface of the coronoid process forms the tuberosity of ulna. The last structure in the proximal end is the trochlear notch. The anterior surface of the olecranon process and the superior surface of the coronoid process forms the trochlear notch and the trochlear notch bears an articular surface that articulates with the trochlea of the humerus to form the elbow joint. Let's have a look at these parts. So this is the lateral view of the proximal end of ulna. This laterally present notch is the radial notch. This is the ulna tuberosity present on the lower corner of the anterior surface of the coronoid process. And lastly, there is this trochlea notch present that articulates with the trochlea of humerus to form the elbow joint. The next part is the shaft. The shaft has three borders and three surfaces. The borders present are anterior border, interosseous border and the posterior border. And the surfaces are anterior surface, medial surface and posterior surface. Let's have a look at these borders and surfaces by looking at the bone from different perspectives. This is the frontal view of ulna and this surface which you can see is the anterior surface. This is the anterior border. Looking at the bone from posterior view, this is the posterior surface. This border is the posterior border. And from the posterior view of the bone, we can also see the medial surface. So this is the medial surface. To see the interosseous border, we have to look at the bone from the lateral aspect. This is the lateral view of the bone and the border here is the interosseous border. This completes the shaft of ulna. Now the last part of ulna is the distal end. The distal end is formed by the head of ulna and the ulna styloid process. The head of ulna is the first part. The head has the articular circumference that articulates with the ulna notch of the radius to form the inferior radio ulna joint. We will see this joint in a minute, but before that, we need to discuss the second part of the distal end, that is the ulnar styloid process. The ulnar styloid process projects downwards from the posteromedial side of the lower end of ulna. Let's have a look. This is the inferior view of radius and ulna, and this shaded area is the head of the ulna. This projecting process is the ulnar styloid process. This is the radius bone and this is the articulation of the articular circumference in the head of ulna with the ulna notch to form the radio ulna joint. Lastly, this is the articular surface for the scaphoid and lunate bone. So that is it for today guys. Subscribe the channel and also follow us on Instagram.